Wow, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. There's so many smart people around. Um, did you know that there's actually 6,000 people or participants here right now? Isn't that phenomenal? I think, uh, I, I didn't even think that there were that many people in the Nordics, to be honest. Um, uh, but all kidding aside, this event is, is really shaping up to become the event uh, in uh, even the nor uh, Northern Europe, I'd say. Um, and, um, and I think it's a key piece in us becoming uh, um, the next Silicon Valley, or really the real Silicon Valley. Um, and, and I'm not kidding, you know. So, you know, just take a look at the, the top grossing charts and, and you'll understand why, 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 uh, why we as a region is, 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 is important for the years to come. Um, so I wanted to just say thanks. Thanks to Slush. I mean, the, the amazing team uh, with, with Miki, Niels, Charlotta, and so on. Uh, don't they deserve an applause? <laughs> so uh, I wanted to talk to you about Spotify today. And at Spotify, um, everything really starts uh, with the user. And, and our promise to the user is that we will get you the right music for every moment. And uh, uh, one way to do this would be to talk about our award-winning you know, applications that millions and millions and millions of users use every day uh, on their computers as well as on their mobile devices. Uh, we could talk about uh, you know, how, we, um, how we make it possible for them to discover new music and personalize their experience. That, that's, the, you know, that's the right music part of our, of our promise. Um, I could go on and talk about um, you know, how ubiquitous we are. You know, we are on nearly every platform there is. You know, we're on iOS, Android, Windows Phone, Blackberry. Uh, we're on all tablets. We're on portable speakers. We are on laptops, you know, all the OSs, including Linux. Uh, we are on every, almost every smart TV out there. Uh, we, uh, we have car integrations and so on. So that, that's, the, uh, that's the part of, 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 of the promise that is the every moment part, right? So write music for every moment. Um, we could talk about our offering, you know, we could go on and talk about how we have a completely free service and at just $9.99, which is, you know, barely uh, two lattes, uh, you, could, uh, you could get all the music, uh, you know, in, uh, that, that's been created in human history, uh, you know, on your mobile phones. Um, you know, we, we can even go on and talk about, uh, you know, the 32 markets that we recently launched in and we can talk about all the milestones uh, and so on. Um, uh, it's been a crazy ride the last couple of years. We can even talk about the, the, the amazing support we get from our phenomenal investors, right? Um, but um, I'd like to do it somewhat differently today. Uh, I want to talk to you about, um, uh, about how we do it. I want to talk to you about growth and how we think about growth. And it turns out uh, that for us, uh, it's not merely implementing the most recent uh, growth hack. Um, it's really something quite different. And uh, so it really starts out when I met Daniel, uh, who's the CEO and co-founder of Spotify. Uh, I was working at King um, at that point in time. And uh, we were just then creating some of, the, some of the most successful gaming products that are around today. Uh, you all know them you know, uh, by their brand names. Um, so I had, um, it, it was safe to say that I had gaming DNA. And, and uh, we were both based in Stockholm, so uh, much of our kind of uh, uh, our discussions were around gaming and Facebook and so on. So, um, so when I joined Spotify, I had certain preconceptions uh, about, uh, about the people that uh, were working there. And um, it, was, uh, it was pretty mysterious. Even though we were in the same city, it was pretty mysterious to me. I thought it was a bunch of uh, ultra-intelligent technologists that were uh, coding in the most you know, complex languages. And you know, this is why, what I had heard. Right? I, um, I also thought that there was going to be a lot of celebrities around. Right? Um, Daniel and the team, uh, they, they were close to, or they are close to many artists. Um, and, uh, and Sean Parker is, is, is on our board. Um, Mark Zuckerberg is a, is a close friend and partner of ours. So, um, you know, I was, I was looking forward to some glamour. Instead, this is what I met. A bunch of long-term thinkers um, 
an industrialist trying to create something that would eventually last for a long, long time. Um, this, is, uh, this is Sandvik, um, or Sandvik as we say in Swedish. Um, this is the founding team in 1881 on their first corporate offsite. You know, they had offsites back then too. And um, they're really famous for waking, making the world's best construction tools and, 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 uh, and machinery. Uh, the revenue today is about 100 billion Swedish kroners on an annual basis. Um, the point here I'm trying to make is that they were long-term thinkers already back then. And I dare to say uh, that today, this is essentially what, what separates us uh, um, as a region from, from many other parts of the world, that we are uh, long-term thinkers. We want to build things that last. Um, and, and um, well, so at Spotify, we want to grow um, and we'd like it to sustain. We want to grow fast and we'd like to be around. So we're trying to build something that really will last for more than a century. That'd be nice. A hundred years from now, we're still here, you know, bigger than ever. So if you think about it, um, we have the underpinnings uh, in the marketplace and in, in, in the kind of um, opportunity we're going for uh, to make that happen. Um, at any point in time, there are about two billion people listening to music on planet Earth. 500 of those are listening to music uh, via online services. And that now includes MP3s, it includes any form of online radio, it includes people listening to music on smart TVs and so on. And all the other obvious channels and platforms. A hundred of these 500 million people are listening to music via streaming music services. We are one of those. Um, so if you do the math, um, really, there's about 1.9 billion people that are going to move towards uh, our kind of offering. Um, and, and so it is indeed a, 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 a big opportunity and a challenging one. So when we think about uh, how to approach this, um, uh, we're pretty traditional, actually. And, um, and it's really about making a world-class product. That's one. We need to be world-class at marketing, and we need to also serve the best possible content. When these three things work in concert, you get something um, like an iPhone. Right? It rarely happens, but when it happens, it's big. So that's what we're going for. We were going for, for doing these things really, really in the right way. So I'm going to give you a few examples. Let's start with product. Um, innovation at speed, we've learned, really happens when you have platformized the organization especially when you're trying to do product development, right? So uh, we've seen, um, um, we've invested considerably the last few, uh, few years into doing this. Um, uh, today we have roughly 40 squads at Spotify that work on different problems or opportunities. So it really becomes challenging to, to kind of, uh, you know, understand wh who is going to do what and so on. So the way we solve that is really that we merge two approaches at once. The one approach is the static approach, the second approach is the dynamic approach. The static approach is really looking at the product as a technology stack. Right? Uh, in the bottom, you have uh, you know, um, um, uh, basically a, a core piece of technology that plays music. On top of that, you have a platform. On top of that, you have the hosting of the applications. On top of that, you have features. On top of that, you have the information architecture. And then on top of that, you have the design, which is what you guys see. Right? And from time to time, uh, any of these layers would need updating. So for instance, we would take out the, uh, the design layer we would change it, we would unify it across platforms, we would put it back into the stack, and boom, you have an upgraded product. So that's looking at it from a, from a, uh, um, from a static approach. Uh, and so uh, to simplify it, we've said, OK, our 40 different squads you know, consist of a number of platform squads, a number of feature squads, and a number of design squads. So these work you know, in concert to try to, to, to make uh, you know, as many upgrades as possible. The other approach we have is a dynamic approach, and that's really uh, you know, to, to look at it from, from a user per perspective. So we basically track the whole user journey. We look at, you know, what source he's coming from, uh, how to onboard the user, how to make him understand what a playlist is, uh, how, to, how to personalize the product for him to use it the, the, in the best way. And then eventually, you know, we would also like him to, to, to convert into a paying subscriber. So um, 
and we have the corresponding squads that are really kind of uh, doing it this way. Um, so, and as you might have noticed recently, if, if, if you have the product, uh, you've seen us, uh, uh, you know, improve in terms of cadence. We really release a, a new version of our any of our applications in, in just a matter of two to three weeks, and that is really fast if you think about it. Um, um, this, is, uh, this is really how the squads work uh, to, to ship a product. So we, in the first stage, we basically think it, we then build it, we then ship it, and then we tweak it. Um, and as you, as you can see here in the think it phase, the operational costs are really high, or sorry, really low because you're just thinking about it. Uh, but the product risk is, is almost infinite because you don't know if it's going to work. But as time passes and as we, um, as we ship the product into the market, you know, by gradually rolling it out, we understand, we tweak, and so on. So eventually, these two, these two costs and risk converges and, and goes down to, to zero. That's when we hopefully have reached a local maximum uh, and then we would be ready to go on to the next kind of local maximum. Um, this has been done now a few times uh, at Spotify, and, and I, I must say it's working really, really well um, uh, compared to uh, maybe two years ago. So that's the product piece. Uh, let's quickly talk about content. Now, um, we have all the world's music. And it's pretty special because it's the first time in human history that, uh, that someone has taken all music that has been created and giving that to single individuals. You know, think about it. It's pretty special. What do you do with all that music, right? So um, having just access to that is not special enough, we think. So uh, for instance, Spotlight is one of our programs that brings forth the, the latest artists. So we really use a, a, an approach where we look at all the data we have, and then we also curate. So you could call it a, um, a humanized kind of big data approach, where there are algos and there are curators. Um, we don't only focus on, on new music, uh, we also look at catalog, because it turns out that if you have access to older stuff, you actually consume it. Right? So if you think about it, Nirvana um, uh, would be as relevant today as it was 10 years ago. Uh, we have programs, programs like Landmark to really kind of bring forth that type of content. So we work actively with our content. Um, we uh, sometimes focus on, on helping artists and breaking them. So virtually unknown artists like Kazette that you see here are two Swedish kids that, that do house music. Um, you know, uh, through a series of pretty interesting marketing efforts, we really kind of took them from nothing. Uh, obviously, they, they were extremely talented. Uh, but with, uh, combined with our marketing approach, we, we got them to be signed by, by Island Def Jam, and, and they're now touring the world. Um, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, we, we also work with established artists. Uh, someone like Avicii that you probably know um, um, is also someone that, that is enjoying massive success out, out there already. Uh, what we do is to work with him to try to really um, give that an extra bump. So with his latest, latest release, we also put a, a series of, of, of activities uh, out there directly on our own platform. Um, um, to, to help him help him break records. And, and it broke records not only on our platform, but he also ended up being top five on Billboard globally. Um, uh, we built, with him, we built uh, basically a pre-release hype that, that was directly executed on all our different platforms. You might have seen it. So it basically, we built up a, 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 a hype that eventually led to a euphoric release for him. Um, um, let's talk uh, about uh, marketing. So at Spotify, we also believe that a world-class marketing team and, and, and effort will separate us from the rest of the pack. And, and we try to really think about this differently and, and stand out. So uh, acquisition marketing, paid acquisition or user acquisition, uh, uh, that it's sometimes called, is a really important piece in this. And um, um, the massive reach that is basically being unlocked now uh, by people that have, uh, um, uh, that have been, been, been kind of creating this reach in the last couple of years, with Facebook and Twitter being two of the biggest ones, um, they are now opening that inventory up. Um, they are now wanting to monetize that fully, and so all of a sudden it's like in 2000, you know, AdWords all over again. You know, it, we are in the first stages of a land grab situation, we believe. So for anyone out there who, who wants installs and users, we're at a pretty kind of unique point in time right now. So uh, becoming really good at this is, is, is important to us. And, and I dare to say that we're also really well positioned uh, to, uh, to do this. Um, um, 
uh, you can, if, if you, many of you here in the audience are, 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 uh, are game devs and, and, and entrepreneurs behind successful gaming companies, uh, so you understand the example now. You, you, you can basically you know, show a bubble in a bubble shooter game from um, you know, so many angles. But we have Lady Gaga, and you know, we have Bruno Mars, and so on. So I think that we are going to be able to take you on when it comes to, to, uh, to, to getting that inventory out there. Uh, efficiently. Now, um, if you if you kind of pay attention to um, uh, to some of the good writings that are out there, uh, especially one piece that that Christian Segerstrolle, um with Initial Capital has has put out, he, he's uh, he's pointing out that hey guys, you know, user acquisition is all good and it, it it's something that you need to understand and do well, but uh, it's not enough if you really want to become become the guy that really kind of hits all of the addressable market for your product. So um, brand marketing and, and, and doing a kind of a, having a holistic approach um, around marketing is really important to, to, to do. So um, and, and, and it's all about getting those low CPAs, right? And it's really kind of getting, uh, get, getting that to happen uh, via uh, telling stories and, and connecting with, with your addressable market. So. Um, uh, uh, so we uh, and, 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 and the one way we do it is, is that we look at a certain phenomenon and then we try to kind of reproduce it. Uh, one thing we, we noticed was really, hey, there seems to be a, a tipping point going on here in some of the markets that we've been in. Uh, so we take that, we deconstruct that, uh, we're very, being very data-driven about it, and then we put together a marketing effort to basically reflect what has happened in another country organically. Um, so uh, uh, this is uh, what is going on in Ireland right now. Uh, we are really kind of uh, trying to recreate that, that, that momentum that we've had elsewhere in the market. And um, uh, it, it's going really, really well. Uh, so uh, I don't have much more time, but to sum it up, um, you know, we're here to build something amazing. Uh, for users, and um, and the point is really that we'd like to still be doing that a hundred years from now. Uh, we believe that growth will come from something simple, uh, traditional, and beautiful, which is really to have the best product out there, uh, a world-class marketing organization, and and then some good good content curated in and 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 with both data and 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 and, and humans. Um, so with that, I, I've run out of time. Thank you for, for letting me speak to you.